but I just hit record. Alright, so guys, last class we learned the fundamental theorem of calculus. Chris, was it everything you had hoped for? Yeah, it was like more. Exactly. It was more. More even. Yeah, good answer. It was the most important day, but I'm sorry, you're only like 16 or whatever, 15. All downhill from here. Uh, there's really nothing left to learn in life, so I mean, it's pretty much just it. Um, yes? Can we, can we leave school now? Oh, yeah, you could, I mean, you could probably leave school, but this is, this is, you're here for, um, 40% of the reason you're here is just babysitting. Guys, if we just left you alone, you would like, all do drugs. Play video games and Anyway, um, I'll stop there. Um, so, yes, while your parents are, um, hard working, making money, you, I am babysitting you, and as a side project, teaching calculus. So, Stefan, <laughs> fundamental theorem of calculus last time. What was the fundamental theorem of calculus? It was the following. Well, actually, you tell me. Oh, you're being curious. <laughs> uh, David, fundamental theorem of calculus. What was it? What did it mean? Shared experience, a poem, perhaps, a liver. Just, um, <laughs> free res just free response. Haiku. Oh, what's that called? Um, Choose the more useful one. Yeah. Right. So, like, if you're taking the integral from like, let's say the lower limits a and the upper limits b, right? Mm -hmm. Of a yeah. certain function. Yeah. Right. How about um, the derivative of a certain function? Oh yeah, the derivative of a certain function. Then it's just that function. Well, yeah. That function. Well, that's f of yeah. F of b minus f of a. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Incredible. Right. Unbelievable. Uh, dramatic, shocking, yet at the same time obvious, intuitive, like almost if you just kind of, you could kind of like blink and miss it and then just you've forgotten perhaps that you ever didn't know this. Uh, this is if f is like some kind of position function and if you think and therefore f prime is the velocity, this says that the integral from a to b of a velocity curve is the change in position, which is on some hand it's like you might think how did people ever not know this? Did anyone have that kind of reaction? I still don't know. Yeah, you still don't know. You don't, you don't know it or you still don't know how they don't, how they don't know it? You don't know. Alright. Alright. Um, all right. So this is fundamental theorem of calculus part one. Just a quick example um, in which I'll well this is this cool down. Um, we took this integral from zero to pi of sine x dx, right? And um, how did we, we were interested in this integral? I was interested, I made you guys interested. Uh, how did we compute this integral? It was really hard. It was really, really, really hard. What did we do? Well, um, we did what we were supposed to do. This is the limit of a Riemann sum. So this is the limit. Z goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub, or I'll just go right to sine. You know, sine of x sub i star delta x. And that involves this entire complicated process of taking the function on some interval, splitting it up into n subintervals, possibly of unequal widths, choosing a sample point from each subinterval, then plugging that sample point into the function, and then added, multiplying uh, the height of the function at that point by a bunch of um, widths of intervals, and then adding them all up, and then taking the limit as n goes to infinity. Incredibly complicated, complex process, which in fact was so hard that we couldn't really even do it, right? I mean, for this, it would depend on us having some formula for the sum of the signs, which we did not have. So how did we do this? We basically just had to do it with the calculator, right? We just, the only, our only way of solving this was to just keep estimating and estimating and estimating and then kind of shrug our shoulders and be like, yeah, okay, I guess it's probably two, right? I mean, if this were 200 years ago, before. 85 years ago, before calculators, 
And if there was no FTC, and someone wanted to know the integral from 0 to pi of sine, which is not a terribly unreasonable thing, because there are definitely um, things that happen in physics which, for which some particle is moving and its velocity is sinusoidal, and you would want to know how much distance um, had, been, uh, had been covered, you would have to just estimate it, right? We did it with 10 rectangles, we did it with 100 rectangles, we did it with 1,000 rectangles. By the time you get 1.998, you say, okay, I think it's probably two. This incredibly convoluted, complicated, in-depth process of adding up all these rectangles with the fundamental theorem of calculus just becomes like this just like a happy 30-second exercise. The integral from 0 to pi of sine x dx is, well, do you know an antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the answer to this integral is simply the difference between uh, the value at pi and the value at zero of some antiderivative. And therefore this is negative cosine pi minus negative cosine zero. And cosine pi is negative one, so that's negative negative one, and then cosine is wait. What did I just do wrong? Nothing. Oh yeah, and then plus cosine zero, which is um, one. And that is two. Isn't that just incredible? Lucy, it's incredible. It's amazing. I can't believe it. All right, um, so here's a happy example. That was only half of the fundamental theorem of calculus. That was Rob's favorite part. The other part is the one that said <coughs> that the derivative of an accumulator function is the function itself. And I think we talked about this a lot uh, in class when we had this painting and we kind of discussed it. This one says that the instantaneous rate of change of some accumulator function is the function itself. If there's some function f and you're integrating that function up to some point and you want to know at some particular point how fast that, that accumulator function is accumulating area, the answer is the rate at which the accumulator function is accumulating area is equal to the value of the function at that point. It's amazing. Together, this says, loosely speaking, that the derivative, well, not, well, the, the derivative of the integral of a function is a function. And this kind of says that the integral of the derivative of the function is that function. So this is linking the two fundamental concepts of calculus. The differentiation and integration are inverse processes. And that's basically calculus, all right? If you don't know this, you haven't really learned the minimum amount of calculus yet, in my opinion. And once you've learned this, you're kind of done. After this, for the next um, three weeks of this class and for all of Analysis 1B, just kind of like doing more stuff. So it's more applications uh, of calculus, more things that you can do with this. All right, anyone else have any like, thoughts, comments? Dan, anything deep to say? Um, all right, a couple more things I wanted to wrap up. I'm not sure if this is worth doing or not. There was this worksheet um, on accumulator functions, which I asked you to do uh, for last class. Remember, I asked you to do this back, which we, did, we didn't go over it, right? I don't think we need to. You don't think we need to? Yeah. You think we need to? Yeah. Or you don't think we need to? Maybe just really quick. Um, because I think it. Uh, you lost it. Um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there, so there is this worksheet because I think it gets kind of complicated, and I want to—I guess I want to contrast the intuitive um, approach to doing this problem versus the kind of correct way. So we had some function, and it looked like this, right? We're able to change the range. It's like seven, ten, uh, three. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, we had, and we had some function a to, was it from 3, right? From 3? Yeah. From 3 to x of f of t dt. Okay, and then they asked you a whole bunch of questions about this. I bet some of you got these wrong, because they're pretty hard. Uh, and this is because you didn't know the fundamental theory of calculus, so you were just winging it. So what we're going to do is we're going to now answer all these questions in two ways the intuitive winging it way where I think really deeply about what's going on, which is potentially very, very confusing. And then the way that's actually very simple because we know the fundamental theorem of calculus now. All right, 
So, um, what is going on? Well, and now I start at three, and I start drawing rectangles, and I start accumulating area. So let's answer, oh, first perhaps we should answer all these quick questions over here to the right. Like, um, yeah, can you just like call them out for me? Like, what is it? H, H, of, six. H of six. H of so that would be, wait, I'm also just going to do them as I go. That's going to be negative nine pi over four, right? H of ten, H of ten is going to be that plus fourteen. Uh, and then H of H of three will just be zero. H of zero. I mean, now it gets complicated, right? Because H of zero is by definition the integral from three to zero of f, and as we discussed, that is equal to the opposite of the integral from zero to three of f, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, and one way that you can understand this fact is that since I am integrating backwards from 3 to 0, if I'm integrating backwards, then I'm sort of like moving backwards or something like that. My, my dx, my delta x's are negative. That's how I explained it to you initially, right, like a couple classes ago. So, de so the delta x's are negative. And then, but what is the integral from 0 to 3? You know, is negative 9 pi over 4. So the final answer ends up being positive 9 pi over 4. Did everyone get to that what everyone got? All right. And one way you can think about that is what you're doing is you're adding up a bunch of products, products of heights and widths. The heights of the, the, or the values of the function are negative, but so are the delta x is negative. Okay, so I think I just learned something, right? Um, if, I'm, if I'm going forward... Forward rectangles, if I have forward rectangles, when they're positive, then that contributes positively to the integral. When I have forward rectangles and they are uh, upside down, then that contributes negatively. But if I have backwards negative rectangles, then they contribute positively. Okay, Sid, a word of warning. Everything, so this is like, every, this conversation that we're about to have for the next 10 minutes like, doesn't leave this classroom. I'm going to say a whole bunch of like super wishy-washy, totally informal crap that you should never ever say again, but it's helpful for thinking. So please on the AP exam, don't ramble stuff like backwards rectangles and stuff like that, because there's no such thing, or, or on my tests. Okay. All right. But I think it might be helpful for understanding. So all right, wait, continuing. What's the next one? H of negative 2. H of negative 2. So now I have to go from 3, I have to go backwards. These upside down backwards rectangles count positively, and then these backwards positive rectangles count negatively, right? So that ends up being 9 pi over 4 minus 2, I guess, right? Yeah. And then h of negative 4 is 9 pi over 4 minus 4. All right, did everyone get this far? All right, now come the deep questions. Actually, almost. Now almost come the deep questions. Where is the function increasing and where is it decreasing? Well, on the interval from 3 to 6, it's pretty clear what's going on because I'm still integrating forward, so that's not so hard to do. So here I am at 3, and if I'm asking the question, is this function increasing or decreasing, then I'm asking the question, you know, as what it means for a function to be increasing is, as you move to the right, does the function go up? Versus decreasing, as you move to the right, the function goes down. So clearly, if we start at 3, and I start drawing these negative rectangles, then what am I doing to my function h? Going down. h is decreasing. Yep. Going down. h. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> h is h is decreasing because I'm adding negative rectangles. All right. So I'm just going to write uh, decreasing here. And now, what happens when I get to six? Well, now I start adding. Uh, now I start adding positive rectangles. And as I add the positive rectangles, then h is increasing. So did you all get that it was uh, decreasing on the interval 3, 6 and increasing on the interval 6, 10? I suspect you did. Okay, now is where it starts to get hard. Um, so I have to erase all these rectangles. Dun, 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 dun. So, uh, here we go. Uh, what is happening on the interval from 0 to 3? What is happening on the interval from 0 to 3? Okay, well, um, let's think about this for a minute. Let's pick a number between 0 and 3, like 1. Suppose x is at 1 at the moment. Well, if x is 1, then it means you've already integrated like from 3 to 1 or something like that, right? So I'm going to already draw these rectangles in because it's kind of like they're already there or something like that. 
that makes sense. And now, since I'm integrating, okay, so I'm integrating from, so I'm integrating from three to one. So the picture looks kind of something like this. Now the question is, I, if I need to answer, if I need to answer the question, what is happening to H as X increases, right? That's what, that's the question I have to answer if I want to know whether H is increasing or decreasing. As X moves to the right, what happens to this integral? Well, as X moves to the right, suppose X is at one, and then a minute, like a couple seconds later, X is at two. Well, how did that affect my integral to go from x equals 1 to x equals 2? Well, I'm essentially erasing rectangles, right? As x moves, I'm integrating, I'm integrating from 3, so I'm integrating from 3 to 1. The integral from 3 to 1 is all these backwards rectangles. But also, these backwards rectangles are upside down. So what is the contribution of each one of these backwards upside down rectangles? Positive. Okay, that's already hard enough. But you have to look at these backwards upside down rectangles and see that each one of them contributes positively to the integral. And now as x goes from 1 to 2, I essentially erase rectangles. Why are you going from 1 to 2? Well, I'm just picking any two numbers on the interval 0, 3. I'm just looking at, I'm just, I'm trying to answer the question what happens on the interval from 0 to 3. So as I move, I'll just be more general then. As I move, from x equals 0 to x equals 3, I'm essentially erasing rectangles, right? I'm changing the, the, this number, but by changing that number, it's kind of like changing the point where I started. And what happens as I erase one each of these rectangles? What effect does that have on h? Oh. Okay, what am I doing? I am, I am erasing backwards negative rectangles. So it's going down. It's going so it's down. going down. That is very tricky, right? These are, these are upside down backwards rectangles. As x moves to the right, I erase those rectangles. So I'm, I'm erasing things which are contributing positively to my integral. So in fact, I am decreasing on the interval 0, 3. Who gets it? Most people, okay. If you actually don't 100 really get it, it's still sort of also okay. Because with the FTC, it means we don't actually have to be this smart to answer these questions anymore. <laughs> uh, so, um, anyway, continuing this same logic, um, what's happening on the interval from negative 4 to 0? Well, if I'm, if I'm on the interval from negative 4 to 0, then let's imagine that x is some number between, uh, let's imagine that x is some number between, between negative four and zero. Wait, now, like zero to negative four, like we're going backwards. Well, so okay, so look at take. So what 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 is the value of each one of these rectangles now for this integral? Negative. Negative, right? Because these are these are right side up, backwards rectangles. So each one of these rectangles contributes negatively again, right? And so what happens as x moves from negative 4 to 0? As x moves from negative 4 to 0, I am erasing right side up backwards rectangles. So since I'm erasing negative things, I am actually increasing my function h. And so we get that this function is, our result that we get is that the function is increasing on the interval negative 4, 0, and also on the interval 6, 10, and decreasing on the interval 0, 6. Okay, um, in fact, this is exactly what we got on the front, right? We got these exact same answers on the front, but it was much less mental effort because we were never going backwards. And now that you know the fundamental theorem of calculus, of course this is the right answer, yes? Yeah, because what is the derivative of h? Yeah, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the rate of change of h is actually just f. And so, uh, if you want to know when a function is increasing and when it's decreasing, you simply look at its derivative. Um, so what's happening on the interval negative 4 to 0? Well, the derivative of h is f, and f is positive. Right? And if the derivative of a function is positive, then it must be increasing. Newman, you with me? 
and over here. So with the fundamental theorem of calculus, you no longer have to go through these extremely complicated, weird mental um, thought processes, unless you think it's fun. And you certainly shouldn't write things like backwards rectangles, because that's a totally informal term. But here, the function is negative, and, um, uh, or rather, uh, the derivative of h is f, and since f is negative, this is basically saying that if I, I can, what I can basically do is I can make a sign chart for h prime, right? And the sign chart for h prime uh, just is the same as the sign chart for f. And so from negative 4 to 0, h prime, which is just f, is positive. And from 0 to 6, the sign chart for h prime is negative because h prime just is f, and it's positive over here. So of course, h is increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. Get it? All right, one final thought on this worksheet is um, on the front of the worksheet, we had this function g. g was the integral from negative 4 to, to 10. No, sorry, negative 4 to x of f. Uh, another way to think about the back is to simply relate h and g. What is the relationship between h and g? They differ by a constant. And you don't even need to know the fundamental theorem of calculus to know that, right? What is, uh, because what is g? g, which is just the integral from negative 4 to x of f of t dt, could be rewritten as uh, the integral from negative 4 to 3 of f of t dt plus the integral from 3 to x of f of t dt. That's just a straight up integral um, split. And that just is, uh, that just is, well what is that? That's just, this is going to be some kind of number. In fact, it's um, 4 minus 9 pi over 4, right? And that is h. So the relationship between g and h is that g is just 4 minus 9 pi over 4 plus h. And so, of course, since these functions differ by a constant, of course they increase and they decrease at precisely the same intervals. So, Wilson, you should expect your answers on the back for when h is increasing and decreasing to be the same as your answers on the front from when g is increasing and decreasing, which were much easier to, to, to figure out mentally. All right, are we good with this? Okay, cool. Um, let's go over the homework. Oh, there's one more thing, which is optional. I never do this. I've always, every year I say I'm going to do it, I've still never do done it. Um, it's the proof. Did anyone read the proof in the book? Yeah. It was, uh, the book had a completely different proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Don't do it. Yeah, I think I'm not. Don't do it. Someday I'll do it. Um, if anyone's interested, come see me. And basically, the book does a pretty good job, I think. They, but they have a completely different proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. They don't prove, they prove this one first. If it, did anyone read the section? Like, you guys read the section, right? Yeah. You do, you think about it, you consider doing it. Um, yeah, the book proves this part of the fundamental theorem of calculus first, which I think of as being kind of a radical, um, you know, educational choice. Uh, and it's kind of a weird proof, but it's cool, but it, it's, it's sort of a little non-intuitive. Um, so I don't, sometimes I, 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 we could, so the, the, two, the way we did it is we proved this one, which I thought was intuitive, and the proof was intuitive, and then we proved this one from that. But you can also just prove this one directly. They're independent of each other. Or not? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, let's go to the homework. How did the homework go? I, think, I thought it was like, okay, right? Let's go over like a handful of problems. Which ones were angel? Which ones were good? I'm looking at the answer. Let's just go over all of them. All of them? Do you really want to? We tried to over 50 before. I don't want to. I think it takes up a lot of time. Absolute values. Let's just do. Let's just do a couple. Fifty-one. I'm rejecting this. So wait, what page is it? Like something. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-seven. Uh, okay, just like exactly. shout out some numbers that we can go over. <laughs> 23. 23. Is there like a 15, 
Thank you. Yeah, this is more than I thought. All right. Um, so, well, oops. Um, so let's do a couple of these. Oh, 15. Uh, yeah. This is the integral from 1 to 4 of u minus 2 over root u du. Well, uh, instead of trying to do some kind of fancy weird substitution or crap like that, just remember your anti-differentiation skills. When you have a single term in the denominator, that means it's easily split upable. So this is really the, the integral from 1 to 4 of just root u minus 2 u to the negative 1 half. And now it's very easy to anti-differentiate, right? All right. Did I mess up? No, we're good. So what is the antiderivative of root u? Uh, u to the 1 half, it, um, it's um, 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, and then minus a boson. So that's just like, um, whoa, suddenly I can't do math. 1 half over times 2, so it's 4, right? Minus 4 uh, root u. And that is the correct antiderivative, I hope. And now we evaluate it at 4 and 1. And so now you pretty much just do it. So this is 2 thirds. Notice how I very, very, Newman and others, notice how I just like have really good, disciplined, quality, organized writing habits where I like write the integral, you know, rewrite it in anti-differentiation friendly form, clearly anti-differentiating, putting my upper limit and lower limit of integration, and then um, using quality advanced use of parentheses. Uh, so this is like 4 to the 3 halves is 8 minus 4 times 2, and then it's that whole quantity minus what I get when I plug in 1, which is 2 thirds minus 4. Oh, so you don't like to split it up? I don't, no. I think, I think this is much, I think so, yeah, it's much more clear. And you won't make like sign errors and crap like that. So it's like 16 thirds minus 8 minus 2 thirds plus 4. So whatever that is, 14 thirds uh, minus 4, so that's just 2 thirds, right? And there's our answer. Okay, good. Uh, 23, for this one, you're back to just, yo, you have to just do it. So you have actually two options. Um, you have two options, let's, let's do this one over here. You have two options for number 23. Number 23 is the integral from 0 to 3 of absolute value 2x minus 3 dx. Okay, uh, well, since it's just really like, since it's just a kind of a line, basically, um, except absolute value ties, you could uh, just make a graph and do it by geometry. So this is really like the integral from 0 to 3 of 2x minus 3 halves. So I know what this looks like. It's just the absolute value function with the vertex at 1 and a half. So the vertex will be here, and I guess when I plug in 0, I get 3, right? And when I do this, I also get 3. So it's just going to be this. So it is perfectly acceptable to just kind of look at this and be like, all right, I know what that area is. It's one of these, well, it's essentially going to be 3 halves times 3, um, 9 halves. And that's just the answer. Did most of you just do it that way? No. Okay. How, can it, how, how can you do it like I know you don't know. Uh, uh, How do you do it not like this? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to do it not like this, then you do the same thing I've been um, basically like preaching at you guys for um, like eight months now. What do you do when you have absolute values? Get rid of them. Right? So the so two x minus the absolute value of two x minus three just is by definition, this is like the analytical solution to this problem. Well, it's either two x minus three. Uh, when the inside is positive, so when x is greater than or equal to 3 halves, and it's negative 2x plus 3 when x is less than 3 halves. Uh, and thus, I could split this integral up into two separate integrals. The integral from 0 to 3 halves of, I mean, if you want to get really technical about it, I'm splitting it up into the integral from 0 to halves, of absolute value 2x minus 3. No, not absolute value, right? Well, just watch, watch. Plus the integral from 3 halves to 3 of 2x minus 3. Okay, that's clearly correct. 
Oh. Right? And then, just by the definition of what the absolute value means, if x is a number on the interval from 0 to 3 halves, then this just is uh, that. Right? So then it's negative 2x plus 3, integral from 0 to 3 halves dx, uh, plus the integral from 3 halves to 3. Of on the interval 3 halves 3, absolute value 2x minus 3 just means 2x minus 3. And now I can um, now I can just do it. But now I mean it's like more work, right? I have all this work to do still. This is like negative x squared uh, plus 3x, and I have to evaluate that at 3 halves and 0 plus, and then that's x squared minus 3x. And I have to evaluate that at 3 and 3 halves. Can I just like stop now? I'm sick of doing this. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. I do this all out, I better get 9 halves. Yeah. So you finish and you double check if that's true. All right, more. Um, this is good. Learn, doing some good learning here. 35. 35. Oh, I think you just, guys, just, if you had trouble with this, it means you just didn't, don't know how to anti differentiate 2 to the x. So that's an anti differentiation problem. But anyway, uh, this is, I just have to know what that is, right? And the answer is it's 1 over ln 2 times 2 to the x plus 6x. Why is that true? Uh, I don't know. It just works, right? <laughs> differentiate, differentiate this. The derivative of 2 to the x is ln 2, 2 to the x. So boom, boom, and then we're good. So 2, 0. Uh, and now I just have to finish this off. So it's... Um, it's going to be a 4 over ln 2 plus 12. That minus, um, when I plug in 0, I get 2 to the 0, which is 1. So minus 1 over ln 2. Right? Yeah. Please be kind of disciplined about this. Don't just assume that when there's a 0 here, everything's going to be 0, because it's not true. It's only true for polynomials. So, what I have is 3 over ln 2 plus 12. That's pretty much my answer. I could maybe do something with that, but whatever. Questions? Newman, you good? Getting these all right? All right. More. Uh, 51. 51. Oh, yeah. This was, one of these problems is really annoying. It didn't work out nicely. Oh, right? my God. It was so, it's like a rabbit. Yeah, 50 decimal answer. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it was terrible. Uh, sounds like, sounds like a challenge, even, which sounds like you met that challenge head on. I did. So it was a character building exercise. So x minus 2 root x on the interval 0, 2. Okay, well, conceptually, this problem says, hey, Find the value of c guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals for the function over the indicated interval. So, what does the mean value, well, let's make a quick picture of this function, shall we? What does it look like when x is 0, it's 0, and when x is 2, it's 2 minus 2 root 2, which is like not very big. So, I'll just kind of draw some generic -y function that looks like this. I'm not really sure what it looks like, who cares? All right, and the question says, uh, 